My name is Tim Williams. I'm an architect and urban designer. I head up the workplace sector at BDP, of which um, I'm a director. Uh, BDP is an interdisciplinary practice. We're an international practice based in the UK, working in uh, France, in, in, in Africa, in, in, in Europe. Um, we've been working in India for the last uh, five years, and, and uh, in, in January next year we uh, intend to open a studio in Delhi. The, um, the theme of, of uh, what I wanted to talk about today um, falls into sort of four areas. Uh, the, um, the urban office, the hybrid office, the uh, low energy office, and the uh, interactive office. Um, a lot of the thinking that uh, we've done in, in the context of the urban office started um, with this, uh, this scheme in, 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 in Hamburg, which we won in, in a competition some years ago, which was about creating a, uh, creating a link from the old part of the city over here uh, down to the, to the waterfront. Um, and in that, uh, <coughs> in that street, in that, in that new, newly created street, it was really about creating special zones, about creating a residential zone, about a, a mixed resident office zone, and then in the, in the heart of it, an office zone, uh, and then the destination, uh, the waterfront, the cultural centre. Um, the, uh, the office scheme um, evolved uh, into an interesting typology, a typology of a plinth with two courtyard buildings, um, all low energy, uh, an arrival space on the corner with this sort of hard space from which all the office areas were accessed. Um, this sort of early uh, involvement in, in uh, uh, urban design issues led us on to a much bigger project in, in Prague, Budney, um, which involved uh, an area uh, about uh, 20 times the size of the uh, of the Half and City project, and this is it on the uh, opposite side of the river from the uh, from the old town. It's an old uh, railway um, sidings area that uh, ripped the city in half. Um, we applied uh, parametric geometry to evolve uh, an urban design strategy for this site, um, and using uh, that geometry, we, we developed what we call here a development envelope, um, which is a, a form. Uh, that allowed us to uh, have height in certain areas uh, reduced uh, in, in other areas in response to the urban design criteria for the city, important views, uh, connections, uh, emphasizing certain points in the plan. Using, using um, this parametric geometry, we then took this solid form and um, cut into the form uh, the spaces, the, the streets, the piazzas, the belvedere's that make up uh, the urban uh, st structure of the uh, master plan, almost turning conventional master planning on its head by starting with the solid and cutting, cutting out to make these connections. And so we evolved um, an envelope um, with its connections, um, which sat in an urban context and created the connections east-west, uh, north-south, that tied this new uh, program uh, into the city. And out of that program, uh, the urban design, the actual uh, design of the spaces um, evolved um, from uh, the para parametric geometries that we established um, uh, in, the, uh, in the concept stage into this, the, the, the solution for the uh, design. Um, we also use parametric geometries uh, to investigate the individual building forms. Here, this was a, a simple uh, office, uh, office tower um, where we used the um, intelligence of the model to tell us in green those areas which complied with city ordinances as far as daylight penetration is concerned. And by manipulating the form, we were able to inform ourselves of how that affected the compliance with uh, city, the city regulations. And so um, not only did we look at the issue from the broad urban uh, scale, but we also looked at the issue from simple things like uh, daylight, uh, daylight penetration and compliance with the, uh, the city code. And the resultant uh, master plan um, uh, evolved uh, using these uh, simple, uh, simple uh, uh, technologies to tell us um, how light um, and ventilation uh, worked within uh, the master plan. Out of these master plans and many others that um, we, we've been involved with in recent years, um, 
what's interesting is, 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 is the hybrid nature of what, what comes out of um, those, um, uh, those exercises. Out of many of these uh, master plan exercises that we've undertaken over recent years, this notion of a hybrid, the hybrid office has, has, has emerged. A hybrid buildings coming out of uh, quite radical uh, considerations of what the master plan needs. This, this, this design uh, for, for a building in, in, in Brighton is actually a combination of um, an office building, um, a conference centre, uh, a, a, retail, uh, a retail destination, leisure facilities, um, and a hall, and, and a hotel uh, uh, stacked up um, in this uh, uh, beachfront uh, des destination, uh, connecting the old part of Brighton with the, uh, the seafront um, and reinvigorating this, um, this, this, this uh, destination for conferences as, as, as well as um, leisure and entertainment. Um, and and uh, the, there you see the, uh, the sort of uh, complexity of the, of, of, of the uh, stacking of, of, of these functions on top of an, uh, one another uh, to create this uh, interesting hybrid form that um, plays this key role in the uh, master plan. Um, in terms of the office are thinking about the office sector. This, this, uh, this project in, in Dubai, um, we evolved a, a different hybrid, the um, uh, office building with the uh, residential above. And what's, what's quite interesting about this one is the, uh, um, this combination of a uh, simple office floor plate, 15 meters deep, uh, flexible, good quality space, Naturally, naturally lit where possible, um, and uh, building the uh, residential towers on top of that, so that the, the towers uh, minimise the impact of natural light on the offices below. The towers, the residential towers, um, took advantage of the views, the aspect and prospect of their location, while the office buildings, the bigger floor plates that were necessary, hugged, hugged the ground and provided flexible and uh, adaptable um, office accommodation. Quite interesting um, uh, 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 turning on its head of conventions, the conventions of putting smaller office plates uh, and stack them up. Um, underlying all these uh, master plans is very often being the, uh, the retail component, the activation of the street at ground level. Here again in this Dubai example, the street um, is activated by the retail and then above that uh, the office levels. The simple uh, floor plates, uh, flexible and naturally lit, um, providing that uh, 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 special accommodation. Um, which really sort of takes us on to the, um, the third theme, um, which is the low energy, the low energy theme. And um, with this project closer to home, uh, we, we completed some years ago the headquarters for Roche Pharmaceuticals UK. Um, here, uh, the idea was to take uh, the concept of the street, the urban street, and place it at the heart of the uh, office building, such that when you enter the building, uh, you could see how the building works. It revealed itself um, as you entered and saw its connecting parts and how you got to them. But the um, um, the story about Roche was, was, was really um, not the hybrid story, but the uh, low energy story. Um, because this was, this, this was the, uh, a building where, for the first time in the UK, um, borehole cooling was used to take the uh, summer peak uh, cooling load off the building. And so this, uh, when it was um, designed, had the largest uh, borehole array in Europe, 160 or so boreholes that um, uh, took off that uh, peak. Uh, cooling load um, and lower the energy to, to um, uh, almost unprecedented level um, for, um, uh, for this type of building.